In this part, we are going to take a closer look at conversion nodes, which are extremely important to understand as VL is a so-called type-sensitive language. You always have to take care of the data types when connecting nodes because it is only possible to create links between pins that have the same data type. Pretty often you will be in situations in which you need to convert between data types, for example, convert an integer into a float or the other way around, or to combine numbers to vectors or print a number as a string and so on. I would like to show you on a very theoretical level how to convert between the basic data types that we have been looking at so far and equip you with the most common techniques for type conversion. We will start by converting between booleans, integers and floats and here is one rule of thumb. The conversion of types happens automatically when no information gets lost. Therefore, it is easy to connect a boolean, for example a toggle, to an integer or to a float. We can always simply make a link between these pins and the type conversion will be done automatically for us. The other way around though, going from numbers to a boolean or from a float to an integer is trickier, because we have to decide which information of the data we want to sacrifice. As you can see, we cannot make a connection between these two I.O. boxes and we have to insert a node in between to make the type conversion. So you can simply round the float with one of the rounding nodes, for example a floor, which will return the number without the fractional part as an integer. To generate a boolean from an integer or a float, we can make use of comparison nodes, most likely the equal to operator or is odd. Especially when it comes to drawing in 2D and 3D space, it is very important to know how to use single numbers inside vector data types or how to get the individual numbers of a vector. In general, there are two important nodes for this purpose which you will use a lot, vector join and vector split. When selecting one of both in the node browser, you are asked which vector you want to split and you need to pick the right one depending on your situation. All of them have individual floats as inputs and will output the corresponding vector. To retrieve the individual positions of vectors, use the split operation which will return the individual floats inside a vector. You can also combine both split and join operations to, for example, convert a vector 2 to a vector 3. First you split into the floats and then you combine them again into a vector 3. To combine a single value and a vector 2 to a vector 3, there's also a shortcut which are these XYZ nodes. In this case, the lowercase character is the position that will be inserted in the output vector. To convert from floats to a color data type, we can actually use a similar method, which combines four floats to the RGBA data type using the from HSV node. As already explained in the chapter about I.O. boxes, colors in VL are mostly made up from floats between 0 and 1 for the hue, saturation, value and alpha, which are also the inputs of the from HSV node. On the bottom, the node outputs the respective color. Like this, it is now easy to implement a color that is animating through the whole spectrum, as the value for the hue is constantly cycling in the range between 0 and 1 and can be driven by the phase output of an LFO, which is also a float. We can also use the inverse conversion node called 2HSV, which takes a color and splits it into the individual components as floats, therefore the values for hue, saturation, value and alpha. We can also generate colors from strings and convert back, for example using the nodes from hex and to hex. Here we simply provide a string representing a color as a hex code and can also easily convert back to the hex code representation. Let's also look at some methods to convert to and from strings. So if you want to represent a float or an integer as text, we have to use the adaptive to string node, which outputs as a string whatever is sent into it.
As you can see, this node is removing leading or trailing zeros from the output string. So if you want to include these, you need to use the toString format node. This one has another input on which you can provide a specific output format. Like that, you can make sure that the output string always has the same amount of digits before and after the floating point. Going the other way, from a string to a number, is possible with the adaptive try parse node. As you can see on the tooltip, its input is specified as a string, while the output is still unspecified. So we need to make a connection from this node to another pin, which already has a type set. Once we connect try parse to an integer of load IO box, it will know to which type it should make the conversion to. This is a good opportunity to mention that you can also use the toString node to convert from a path to a string. And for explicitly converting a string to a path, you can use a toPath node. You will be using the methods presented in this video over and over, and I would suggest that you come back to this video from time to time, as many errors and problems that you run into while learning BL can often be solved by converting between data types. It should be mentioned here that we are actually only scratching the surface. Data types are all over the place in VL and I have only introduced you to the very basic ones that VL has built in by default. Every package and every library comes with its own types that range from simple to very complex and you will be converting, joining or splitting data all the time. In the next video we will start exploring the stride package which comes with some of these special data types that you will be using to create real-time renderings in 3D.